Hi everyone, it's uh, from from the crow's nest, uh, 8th of August, and I'm out and about again. Look where I am. This is uh, Burnt House Cops, or uh, Maury's Cops. Uh, and uh, this apparently is where um, uh, Mr. Maury's grandson was was deposited after he'd been murdered it's a really really creepy place even in the middle of the day um and i've just found crow's feathers everywhere and yeah it's eerily still and alone anyway i thought it'd be a nice spot uh to talk about herbs and uh, we're going to talk about the the nine Anglo-Saxon sacred herbs. And uh, I'm going to recite, well, read uh, the the chant, the enchantment, the prayer, the magic. I mean, it's a number of things. I mean, it's much, much older than Christianity, um, but has been adapted over the years. And we'll talk about the the nine um, sacred plants. So we start with mugwort. Mind you mugwort, what you disclosed, what you rendered at Regan May laid. Now, that is apparently a place that I haven't been able to find. And there's different pronunciations, different spellings. There's Regan Laid made, there's Regan lead, Regan laid. So I don't know. The first of you are called oldest of plants. You mighty against three and against thirty. You mighty against poison and against infection. You mighty against the evil, the fares through the land. And next we move on to plantain. Everyone knows plantain, don't they? Um, it grows with the little knobs on the end and you can bend them around and fire them at people. And it used to be called Waybread. And you, Waybread, plant mother, eastward open, within mighty, over you chariots creaked, over you queen rode, over the brides tramped, over the oxen snorted. This all you then withstood and dashed apart, as you withstand poison and infection and that evil that fares through the land. So it, it it grows anywhere, you know, and that's what they're saying here. It grows on the roadside. It grows um, uh, in uh, out in the open, in the gravel, everywhere. Everyone's seen it. You know, it grows everywhere. The next lamb's crest, or sometimes called hairy buttercress, or sorry, hairy bittercress, I should say. But they used to call it stoon. Stoon, this plant is called, where stone grew. Stands she against poison, she drowns out pain. So an anesthetic, as well as an antiseptic. Uh, the next is nettle, good old nettle. Nettle, she is called, stands she against poison, she drives out wretchedness, throws out poison. This is the plant that against the worm battled, this mighty against the poison. She is mighty against infection. She is mighty against evil that goes through the land. Seeing a theme here. <laughs> and uh, on to Bethany. Uh, and it was known as Atteroleth, Atteroleth, A-T-T-O-R-L-O-T-H-E, Bethany, put to fight now, Atteroleth, that less, the more, that more the less, until for him both he be remedied. And up, and the next one, chamomile. Chamomile, chamomile, depends on how you pronounce it. 
Everyone knows it from the tea, but also it's one of the sacred herbs. Mind you, chamomile, what you disclosed, what you brought to an end at Allaford. That never to infection a man's life be sold, since for him someone chamomile is a meal prepared, which means it can be eaten as a meal and will sustain you and has vitamins and minerals. Next one. It used to be called Wegule, but uh, we call it crab apple. This is the plant that Wegule is called. The seal sent forth across the seas and back for other poisons a remedy. These nine go against nine poisons. A worm came sneaking and it slew nothing. And uh, why does it say that about um, uh, crab apple? We'll get onto that in a second. But the reason is because it staved off scurvy and would last full of vitamin C. A worm came sneaking, it slew nothing, then took Voden slew then the adder, nine wondrous twigs, so that she into nine flew. There ended the apple, and poison that she never could, that house never poisoned that house, meaning the body never poisoned the body. I think that's lovely. Next one, Sherville and Fennel. Two mainstays of uh, French cooking and early English cooking. Um, coming, Sherville's coming back, uh, and uh, fennel is just lovely. I've got, uh, I've got some uh, fermenting f uh, fennel from last year that I need to eat. The mighty these two plants created the wise leader, holy in heaven, when he hung, set and sent into the seven worlds for wretched and rich all too ready stands she against pain stands she against poison who is might, mighty against the three against thirty against friends hands against spells against enchantments by the wicked and the wicked whites interestingly white spelt w-i-g-h-t-s i wonder now power have these nine plants against nine who form wonderfully, against nine poisons and against nine infections, against the red poison, against the foul poison, against the white poison, against the blue poison, against the yellow poison, the green poison, against the dark poison, against the blue poison, against the brown poison, against the purple poison against the worm blister, against the water blister, against the thorn blister, against the thistle blister, against the ice blister, against the poison blister. It's very dramatic. If any poison comes east flying, or any form north comes, or any from west over nations of men, Christ stood over illness as none other. And as you can see, there's that interesting juxtapositioning because, you know, we we're talking about Voden earlier and now we're talking about Christ. I alone know running water and the nine adders hold must all weeds now as herbs spring up, seas dissolve, all salt water. When I, this poison, blow away, basically saying that the, the plants will grow and keep the poisons and the illness away. Mugwort, waybread, the east open is. Lamb's cress, atoll three. Chamomile, nettle, wild sour, sour apple, chervil and fennel, old soap work. The herbs to dust, mix with the soap of the apple's juice. Work and paste the water, and of ash take the fennel boil. 
in the paste and beat with. Water mixes, then he, the salve, put on before and after. Sing this charm to each of the herbs, thrice before he prefer, prepares them, and on the apple also. And sing into the mouth, and into both ears, and on the wound, that same charm before he puts the salve on, and on to that. And I think that's just absolutely beautiful. And um, what a what a place to be reading this in. It, it is a creepy, creepy place. I don't know if you can hear the the crows off in the background. And uh, but yeah, I mean it is certainly uh, an interesting of places. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this. Um, as much as I've enjoyed coming out here and putting it all together. Um, uh, thank you very much for watching all the way through. Also, um, don't forget, I have a magazine coming out. Please check it out on Quick, on quick Starter. On Kickstarter, it's only £12 for an episode, an episode, an issue. And if you buy four issues, it goes down to £10. What a bargain. Um, and uh, every page has meaning, even the uh, adverts you'll see. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, have a great day and happy, happy Folklore Thursday. Bye-bye.